I know that not all of you are through all the exercises, but I'll go through some of them now, and then you can have fun with that tonight or whatever. <laughs> Or you can uh, look at the solutions when I upload them this afternoon and then use them for the exam, at least. So, but the first three exercises, this is a, a simple exercise on retention order. So, hopefully, uh, and I know many of you I talked to, managed to, see now it's a good thing you're an engineer, right? <coughs> yep. But uh, the point is that you got one peak here that is not moving, that is not affected by pH. This is the, the compound down here. And then you got a compound with a, a carboxylic acid, which will be charged at pH 7, which will make it more polar. And it will be uh, protonated at low pH, making it more apolar. And it's, uh, here it's just an amine group, so it's positively charged at low pH and uh, uh, uncharged at high pH, high, uh, more apolar at high pH. Then we had this fun exercise. And uh, everyone I talked to is, how can you tell? How would you know which, what is the limit between a very polar and a polar compound? And that is exactly the point with this exercise, is to know, actually, sometimes you have things that are borderline. And when things are borderline, there are more than one correct solution. So this is where you have to know the toolbox. Say, now we've done reverse phase, and nothing is working out. Maybe we should try something else. Uh, but I also told you that helix is uh, one part black magic, which means that if we can make reverse phase work, we will probably do that because we understand the process better. So these two compounds up here, here we've got a nitrogen group, which makes this small molecule extremely polar. Also here we've got an amino acid, which was, will probably be a svitterine at, at, at pH 7. This will be positively charged. This will be negatively charged, extremely polar. These are very good candidates for helic. Also, we got this uh, phosphorylated compound, also extremely polar, a good candidate for helic. No, what is the charge of the wages? Oh, yeah, they're negatively charged. Yeah, so you've got like minus, minus, minus. So this is why the cell puts a phosphate on everything, it keeps in the cell, and it's a water anchor. Yeah. Then we got the glucose, uh, is it glucose? I think oh, I it's glucose. Some sugar. Yeah. You probably all know that better than we do. So a lot of you were uh, in doubt about that. That could be borderline. And maybe if you use some of the extremely polar reverse phase, no, it will still no. not stick. Helic. Yeah. Fumonisin down here. That is a very polar compound, but it, it sticks to uh, reverse phase column, but it would also work very well in helic. So depending on what is the purpose of your analysis, you can choose between the different methods. And I talked with some of you about that reverse phase is like a very big keyhole to look for your compounds. So if you want to look for something completely unknown, you have no idea what is in your extract, you want to map out all the metabolites that a bacterium produce, or you want to figure out what is an antibiotic compound you want to see as, as much as possible. You pick reverse phase. But if you look for a specific metabolite, if you want to look for a toxin, this is a toxin in a specific uh, matrix, it doesn't matter what else is in the extract. You want something that works really well for your compound. So you can pick the method that fits the purpose of your analysis the best. And then we got this small one down here, and that will work well with reverse phase. So we won't try anything else for that one. Then we had these two exercises. 
Um, here you should be able to recognize the difference between the two analogs. You got a, uh, a chlorine sitting here, which makes the compound more apolar, which means that this one will come out first and this one out last in reverse phase. And this is a, an example of what Christian mentioned for exam. We don't want you to make a complete list of compounds and elution order and everything, but we want you to recognize compounds that are similar with just small changes in their chemistry and then try to see out relatively how they differ in their retention. This is something on a 20 meter gradient. This one's coming at perhaps 10, and this one at 10.5. So small difference, but it is clearly separated, no problems. Yep. So it's the same down here. Recognize the small differences in structure. We got some extra aromatic rings sticking out from this one. So when reverse phase C18 fail, we could switch to an aromatic stationary phase like phenyl or pentafluorophenyl, which will give you extra retention for they the They are nicely group. retained, but they're just on top of each other. Yeah. So you just can't separate them. You want to resolve them. You want to drag out the two peaks. Here it gets more, more difficult. Um, We'll see if I can remember the correct order. <laughs> <laughs> so again, at the far end of the scale, we got this small one down here. It's called moly molinoformin. It's a very strong acid. We got a pKa of, of 0.5, which means that even a pH 2.8, this will be charged. So it will be polar and be the one coming out first. Then, we got these two here, a pair. Was it nivalanol or di di dihydroxy divalanol? And this is the difference that you should note. This is the dehydroxy. So, no? Yo, yeah. Right. <laughs> that is nivalanol so, and this is the oxynivalanol. Yeah. So you got an extra hydroxy group here, which makes this one more polar than this one. Again, relative to each other. So whether or not you're able to figure out that this is number two and number three, it's not the important part of the exercise, but knowing that this one is more polar than this one, this is very important. Then we got this small one down here. And actually, even though it looks quite polar, it is polar, but it's less polar than these three. It's coming out as number four. And I, I have to warn you here, yeah. That playing around with the hydroxy group, moving this around in the molecule will have a huge impact. So you can really move this one around in the chromatogram. Yeah. So these are difficult and we always calculate them. So yeah. or test them if we have them. It's uh, so don't get frustrated. Some of this is difficult, but some of this is easy. And we just want you to learn the easy parts. Yeah. And then the last part is to recognize this pair. We got mycophenolic acid and an open lactone form here of the same compound. And here you got the two hydroxy groups sticking out free, which makes this one more polar than this one, which makes this one number five and this one number six. But understanding why this one is more apolar than this one, I don't even get that. I had to. <laughs> no. So, but there's actually a huge difference. This, for some reason, this is quite a polar. I mean, this one is very difficult. It is just retained on reverse phase conditions. We have to, you know, we have to pull ourselves together to retain this one on reverse phase conditions, because it has like one, two, three, four. So, and that is because a lot of the hydroxy groups they are kind of sticking outside of the molecule. But I have to say that comparing these, you know, yeah. Sorry, it ain't yeah. easy. No. Um, again, another example of two compounds that are very similar in their polarity. They come out very closely together in reverse space. But this one got a lot of aromatic rings. So again, here you can improve the retention of that one by choosing another type of reverse space space, phenyl or pentafluor uh, phenyl. So this is one possibility. And also remember here, can go back, 
Now, in this case, it actually goes, we could quantify these two relative to each other. But if you have very little of the smaller one or the opposite, then you cannot quantify them unless you have a very selective detector. And I will come back to that. It's not that difficult. But. And then it gets really ugly. So um, we can start from the back end of the chromatogram again. I'm, I'm taking this, uh, I can't remember the answer, so we have to, you know, exclude some things. The apolar end of the scale, we got the two sterols up here. And again, comparing the pair of these two, uh, this is a acetyl group and this is a hydroxy group. This one will be more polar than this one. So this is number six and this is number seven. Then we move on to the next one and this one will probably be the most polar compound. It's small. It got an acid group and two phenyl groups. So even though it's at low pH, this will be the most, or I'm saying something wrong. No, oh, yeah. and this is the most polar. This is number one. It's got a partner out here with one hydroxy group left at less. So this is number two. So now we covered the two end of the ends of the scale. Now let's get difficult. This is the ones in the middle, the borderline ones. At low pH, we got an amine group sitting in here hiding. This will be positively charged at low pH, which makes this compound quite polar. So this will be number three coming out here. And then we got these two. Again, sometimes retention is difficult to predict. They both got acid groups. This one is, uh, this should be a strong acid yeah, as well. This is an enol, yeah. So we got a carboxylic acid out here, but none of them are charged at this pH. Yeah, I would guess that this is number five and this is number four based on size. Okay. But again, this is difficult and it's just a guess. So again, the ones in the middle, don't feel sorry if you don't. No. And, and, and on this one, if you could go up in pH and remove the charts here, which you can, and some, if you only wanted to analyze, it would give you a sharper peak. You would move it up here so to have a huge impact. And this is, a, I think, a 15 to 100% uh, acetonitride gradient, which is a quite broad screening method. So it has it, these pH. This is why we are so much into this pH, because it, it gives you huge changes in your chromatogram. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the effect in reverse phase that, that gives you the largest movements. That's yeah. pH. Chart wins. Yeah. Should we take a, a small yeah. break? Yeah. Break. No exercises, anything. <laughs> yeah. Until half. And we're actually going to yeah. skip part four today yeah. because. Yes, cool. uh, we're going to kill you. And there's some cake left. Yeah. <laughs> so, last part after the break.